to the, just kidding. <laughs> I would say stand up, everybody say hi, but we already did that. So everybody sit down and be quiet. <laughs> uh, we're going to open with any uh, prayer requests, any testimonies, anything anyone would like to share tonight. Anything? I just want my truck fixed, so if we could just pray for some revelation. <laughs> okay, all things hidden must come to light, yeah. including broken parts and problems. Including the heater. <laughs> yes. That would be kind of good right now when it's six degrees out. Yeah. Anyone, uh, anyone else? Any prayer requests or testimonies tonight? Prayer requests? Yep, prayer requests, testimonies. Favor for the second job interview. Okay. I passed, I passed the first one. And it, it came to me unsolicited, which makes me know it's God. And I passed the first one. And they're going to call about the next step within a week. So, um, I guess favor and Confidence for me, I'm nervous. Cool. <laughs> Amen. I want to that. I want, I want favor to work tomorrow because they had a problem and the people were rude to me today and it was horrible. I thought they were doing cards and somebody said that I wasn't knowledgeable. This day they couldn't take care of me and I'm like, are you crazy? You're all right. I am too lovable. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 There's a lot of love. It's the hair, James. Don't worry, it wasn't you. That's right. It's the hair. It's a new haircut. It wasn't you. It's a little prickly. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That me. brings a porcupine to mind. <laughs> yeah, we'll pray for peace in your work situation, James. Yeah, that yeah, that could it, yeah. it'd be a lot better than doing <laughs> doing out with the car day out there <laughs> running three or four twenty carts in there. It's what I call it. Yes, Darlene. Uh, the CEO at Bethel Media, where Bradley works, his uh, two-year-old boy is gravely ill. He, they, he got E. coli, and it turned into H something. I don't know the three characters. And his kidney shut down, and they thought they were going to lose him. And people came in to pray and worship, and, and he turned around. There's still a lot to be done. But now his sister, who's four, also has E. coli. Two babies, and there are two children now, are both in the hospital wow. with this disease, and they're hoping that she doesn't turn from E. coli into this other disease that, that he got. Are they Later. here? Huh? Are they here? No, in, at Bethel in Redding, California. My granddaughter lives out in Redding. They need to be, they, they need to change their diet and come up right away. They need to be eating some sort of fermented food, and they need to have kombucha because kombucha detoxes your kidneys and your liver. Get rid of that bacteria in your body. Well, they're in, he's in intensive care. I don't know if they're going to give him that there, but they must have eaten something that they're going to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's a leader in a mm -hmm. Christian organization. It's, a, it's an attack of the enemy, obviously. Sure. We, we, we know that, and I can speak about the personal experience because. The enemy always tries to bind a strong man. If one can't bind a strong man, he goes against the time. I've seen it time and time and time again. Yeah, this happens to me time and time and time again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you catch your children, it's like nuts. Yeah, yeah. I lost my two kids for 19 years, and I got most of them back. So I was with the promises and the And uh, Mike, I don't know, Eric.
it's been a strange few years with uh, uh, one of these younger um, used to be a blast and hang around stuff and it's happened for years. Um, just with um, my cousins and uh, his wife and stuff. Okay. Like the bubble dining. Yeah. Um, Okay. Anyone else tonight? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord. Praise God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank we bind the spirit of disease. We bind the bad bacteria, the bad flora that are in those children's bodies, Lord, and they come out right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we were healed. Thank you, Lord, that those babies, those two children, are whole and restored to the full health and will live long lives, Lord, and walk out the plan that you have for them. Heavenly Father, we ask for favor and boldness for Tracy, Lord, as she prepares for a second interview, Lord. Favor, confidence, and boldness, Lord. Favor, Lord. Favor, Lord, that your blessings just pour out, Lord. And for Sarah's truck, Lord, that you know the source of the problem, and you know how to fix it, Lord. You pour out that wisdom, and Eric, and you bless his hands as he fixes it. Lord, Thank you, Lord, that when we put our hope and our trust in you, that you never fail. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. As we gather tonight, Lord, as we gather tonight in the new year, Lord, with renewed hope for the vision for this year, Lord. Give your people vision and focus for the work that's laid before each of us and for this body. Vision and focus for the gifts and the calling that you've placed in each and every one of us. Vision and focus to stir up those gifts, Lord, and use them for the, the furthering of your kingdom, for the glory of your kingdom as we release heaven on earth. Jesus, you have called us each by name and you've given us all a measure of faith, Lord. You've given us gifts. Let us stir those gifts up and let us be a blessing to one another and let us be a blessing to those who are hurting, those that are searching, Lord. People that need to hear of hope. People that need to know that there is life, that there is more than what this world would offer. That there is more than what our eyes can see. That you are hope. That you are life. And that eternal, Lord. And Lord, as we prepare for this new year, Lord, give your body joy. Pour out the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Lord, 2017, we left it bumped and bruised and a little weary, but we are prepared to follow after you, Lord, to take the next step in this race for 2018 and beyond, Lord. For we will not be silent. We will not grow weary and faint, Lord. We will mount up on wings as eagles, Lord, and soar on the winds of your spirit. Pour out your joy and strengthen your body. Strengthen your body for the work that is set before us. And give us vision to see our purpose and our calling, Lord. Open our eyes to see and open our ears to hear as you move. And as those around us, let us see and hear the brokenhearted who are crying out. You need to know your love, your grace. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight as we gather in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just a reminder that if you brought a phone tonight, please turn your phones off till after the service. January 12th, week from Friday. We're pressing through. We're pressing through. It's just starting out. Um, we're going to continue on pressing into the situations and strategies and everything that this year the Lord already has laid out. We just need to come into the light.
alignment of what he wants to do and let the kingdom flow through his people to take this land, take this region, nation, and all the situations we're facing. Amen. Winter Jam. Yeah, yeah. That's a Friday night, I believe, too. Yeah, it's a Friday night. There'll be two Friday nights after yep. that. And uh, uh, we're going to try and get the youth group to go, our, our youth group, and uh, any young adults, any old young adults, any <laughs> old, any, old. Uh, <laughs> young adults. Young, old adults. <laughs> um, Kennedy, Kennedy and Nicole both gave their hearts to Jesus at this gathering last year at Wells Fargo. Um, uh, it's, it's a very positive situation. And... Uh, a lot of popular uh, skills be there for the first time ever. Been over in a long time, and uh, a lot of blast, a lot of blast. So we'll we'll get more coordinated of where and when we'll meet. So we'll go from there. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, let's see, Sarah, do you want to take an offering tonight for us? Okay. Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, okay. Hey, Lord. Um, we come tonight to you. That truth revealed to us. To help us show empathy, and compassion to your children all around us. Yes, Lord. Most importantly, to spread your truth. So that people may know what actual justice and love really is. We ask you to pour your favor over us. We are your favorite children after all. I also ask that I also ask Lord that you help Give us revelation. I know that yes. a lot of us want to know who we are. Some of us do know who we are. Yes. But I ask that you give us revelation to go ahead and spread that. Yes. And to let as many people around us know who they are, whose they are, yes. and what they were made for. Because yes. they're not made to live a mediocre life. That's right. I ask that you bless everyone here tonight. Um, I ask that you just cover us all, keep us safe, and uh, amen. Amen. Okay. First okay. 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 <laughs>
have something that Moses dreamed of and asked for but could never experience and that was to see God in the flesh hallelujah now you may not have seen Jesus the man but all you have to do is look around and you can see God in the flesh praise the Lord that's what he's done he has placed his life his spirit in us so that we not only we can behold his glory but the world around us can behold that glory as we recognize who we are we become an appearing we become a manifestation of God in the flesh praise the Lord that's the great privilege that he's given us his life that treasure in earthen vessels praise God it's, un, it's just unimaginable. That's how good God is. How far beyond the human mind He goes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. Give Him a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God bless Mike, the worship team. Thank you, Suzanne, for uh, getting the circus together. Praise the Lord. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Bless all of you for uh, braving the Arctic weather. The good news is by uh, Sunday we're supposed to be in the upper 30s. Praise the Lord. The bad news is Sunday night is supposed to be snow and rain and ice. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, anyway, it's Iowa and it is uh, winter. Praise God. So that's the way it is. You know, I said it once, and I'll say it again. Get. Praise the Lord. Wow. Beat that, James. <laughs> Give him a minute. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll give you my New Year's resolutions. I don't, they bother me, but I'm, I'll give you my New Year's resolutions. Number one, stop making lists. Yes. B, be consistent. And seven, learn to count. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So. Now we got that behind us. We can move right on. Praise the Lord to the Word of God. Hallelujah. It is Wednesday night, so we'll try to be brief. Uh, I know people have to get up and go to work and do their routine things. We're not going to slight the Lord, but uh, at the same time, we want to be sensitive to everybody's uh, schedules as well. So, again, thank all of you for being here tonight. And uh, let's go right to the Word of God. I'd like to start uh, with Hebrews chapter 3. And verses 7 and 8. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. If you drop down to verses 13 and, or just 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Now Hebrews 4 and verses 3 through 7. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise the Lord. So, just there, in the third and the fourth chapter of Hebrews, five times, he says, Today, after so long a time, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise the Lord. So, today, if you will hear his voice, while it's called today right so I'm looking for him today Amen. praise the Lord I'm looking for him today in my life in me personally praise the Lord right now not just someday but today God is a God of the now yes. amen and today God wants to be revealed God wants to be known God wants to be heard praise the Lord first Corinthians chapter 6 uh, verses 19 and 20 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. So for too long, we have just focused on the natural, you know, on the carnal, external things. And we've missed the importance of what the Spirit is saying to us, the church, right now. Amen. This Bible is one continuous revelation of Jesus. Anything you read in here, if you don't find Jesus, you've wasted your time. It's all about Him. It's all about a revelation of Him. And we are a continuation of this revelation. Praise the Lord. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verses 4 and 5. We are the temple. We are the residence of God. We are the dwelling place of God. Amen. And I, I mentioned this Sunday, but I'll just mention it again because I can. That um, they didn't know Jesus. And they said because they didn't know him, they won't know you. Well, they were confused. Because they were looking at everything naturally, carnally. And Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. God is in me. And so the world doesn't know us either any more than they knew Jesus. What they don't know is the God that's in us. 
Amen? They may know you. They may know your background and your history and, and your genealogy, but they don't know you as a bearer of God, as a child of God, as a, as a carrier, amen, of God. And that's why we have to let the glory out, amen? That's why we've got to let the Lord be revealed, amen? And we do that just simply by being gracious, by being the people of grace. The way we came into this is the way we have to reach other people, praise the Lord. So we sit here in uh, Peter, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. So by both Peter and the Corinthians, we can see that we're not looking at a natural temple here. He's not pointing us to Jerusalem or somewhere in the Middle East. He's talking about us now, today. Praise the Lord. Psalms 127 and verse 1. One twenty-seven and one. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Isaiah sixty-six verses one and two. So except the Lord builds the house, we're wasting our energy. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my words. So what we would build a house with, uh, wood, hay, gold, precious stones, God says, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for a house that's made of material things. If I were, I made all the material things. I could make my own house, and I could make it a lot better than any of you could, right? So he says, I'm looking for a man. Now that's not gender specific. He's talking about humans. Praise God. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, that honors my words, is basically what he's saying. He says, my building materials are spiritual because I'm a spirit. Amen? This place of God's rest is a man. God is building a corporate house that's made of lively stones or living stones being fitly framed together. And that building is the habitation of the Lord. And when we begin to see the Old Testament as an external covenant, a natural thing, a carnal thing, a physical thing, and then the New Testament, an internal covenant, then you'll begin to find that your interpretations are less carnal. See, that's the, it, the difference between religion and relationship. Praise the Lord. That's what happens. We begin to make the transition and we begin to hear what God is saying by the Spirit. Amen? Instead of what we interpret what we hear from the outside or what we see from the outside. We begin to actually look in and listen inwardly and recognize that God is speaking to us by the Spirit. Amen? The Spirit that's in us. Now I said before that Jesus was, he was misunderstood. And the reason that he was misunderstood it was because he was taking external things that the people knew about and then he tried to bring them into an area where they could understand that he was dealing with spiritual realities. Amen? He talks about farming, he talks about you know fishing, he does all he uses these external things to bring them to a place where he could then present or reveal spiritual truths to them. Amen. John uh, two verses thirteen through twenty one. John 2, uh, verses 13 through 21. And I'll show you where our, where our struggle is, is the same place Jesus' struggle was. Because we are bearers or carriers of God. But the world doesn't understand that. And religion doesn't even understand it. Religion focuses on the flesh, on the external, on you getting your act together, on you fixing everything up, on you doing it all right. We're, the relationship is focused on the internal. 
the fact that God is in you. Amen. He has already taken up residence in us as believers and he has already cleansed the temple. Hallelujah. He's made it habitable for himself. So there can't be any unrighteousness in us. There can't be any sin in us. Yes, we externally we can still do stuff that it may be on the list of bad things to do. But it doesn't alter our relationship with God in one bit. Not one, not one iota. He has put our sin as far as the east is from the west. He, he refuses to acknowledge anything wrong with us. Praise the Lord. The Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money uh, sitting. And when he had made a, a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold the doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou us, seeing that thou doest these things? Or who do you think you are to do this, is what they're saying. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Amen. So you get they didn't get it, right? They were totally externally focused, which is the way most religion is today. And I'll tell you this from experience, that people will crucify you not for what you say, but for what they think you said. Right. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So people don't understand what you're talking about if you're speaking by the Spirit and they're hearing by the natural. That's why we struggle a lot of times with unbelievers because we're speaking from a spiritual truth or from a spiritual reality and they're hearing from a natural and carnal way. So it doesn't. the two are like two different languages. Amen. It's like you're speaking a foreign language to them. So we have to be... You know, that's why we have to use grace. That's why we have to be sympathetic and understanding because they're not going to understand. Things that are so obvious to us are complete blanks to them. They don't get it at all. I mean, have you ever had a conversation like that and you're thinking, my God, why can't, why don't they get this, you know? Because it's so simple and obvious to us. Well, it's because we're talking in two different languages here. We're speaking from the Spirit and they're hearing from the natural. Praise the Lord. Look at, for here's another example, Mark chapter 14 and verse 58. We heard him say, now they're testifying against him. They're trying to say, you know, he was a blasphemer. He was doing all these things. And this is what they said. We heard him say, I'll destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I'll build another one made without hands. So he not only... And that isn't exactly what he said, but it is true. Amen. And, but he not only raised the temple of his own body up, but we also are the body of Christ and we're raised with him. Amen. Buried with him and raised again in newness of life. And he's raising up his body even today. Come on. Today. Yes. Because every day is today. Yep. Amen. Amen. Second Peter, uh, verses, or chapter three, verse eight. Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight. So this is a continuous, a continuing revelation of the resurrection, of new life. Amen. And we failed to understand that or to live that out. We spent all of our time trying to be acceptable when we've already been accepted. It's again. It's like I said Sunday. It's it's like. Uh, Communion. You say, you know, search yourselves. And if there's any, you know, thing going on there, why, you know, don't take the communion because you'll drink it under damnation. That is bogus. It's just so misunderstood. And again, it's like a doctor saying, uh, well, you've got this disease, but because you've got the disease, I can't give you this medicine to cure it. Wow. He's the cure. So we're telling people, get your act together, and then Jesus will fix you. No. He saves us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. You, don't, you can't do anything to fix yourself. That's why we have to have a Savior. Right. Amen. He's the answer. He's the medicine. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. Praise God. He's God. Amen. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. 
One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now just, again, this, thing is a, this book is spirit and life. Just because we read it carnally doesn't make it carnal. Just because we read it with carnal understanding doesn't make that the way it is. Right? So Peter's telling, but beloved, be not ignorant of this thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. Amen? So the temple of God, based on that, the body, the temple of God, us, the, the, the religious world. I'm talking about Christians, but Christians in ignorance for the most part. The temple of God is laid in ruins for two days. This is the morning of the third day. I believe that's what grace is all about. It's an awakening. It's the church awakening to, to its true identity. It's been in ruins for two days. Amen? God is going to raise this house up again. And He's going to fill it with all His glory. So that no man can stand to minister in the true tabernacle. That the Lord is pitching in man. It'll be God or it won't be at all. We've had a gospel after man for 2,000 years. It's called religion. But God is not a liar. He said on the third day, I'm going to raise up the true temple. And the glory will fill it to the point where no man can minister. It'll be God. It'll be the Spirit of God. And that's what we're coming, that's the revelation that we're coming to. That's what we're beginning to understand. Look at Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And you can say, well, that's so egotistical. No, I'm, telling, I'm talking to you the way Jesus was talking. And they couldn't get it. They didn't want it because it didn't fit their paradigm. It didn't fit the, the, the carnal, natural way of thinking about it. So unless we change, unless we repent... Amen. And repentance is not talking about just feeling sorry because you were a bad person. It's talking about changing the way you think. The way you think about God. The way you think about yourself. Praise the Lord. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn and He will heal us. He hath smitten and He will bind us up. After two days will He revive us. In the third day, He will raise us up and we shall live in His sight. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, I see that as the day that we live in. I see that as the time that we are in right now today. If you will harden not your hearts, if you won't be carnally thinking, amen, God will appear in the temple. Come on. You'll find the rest. Wherewith the weary find rest. Amen. He's not talking about a natural temple, but a temple that is made with hands. Not a temple that was made with hands, but a house that is filled with His glory. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. See, I'm not looking to Israel for a temple mm -hmm. to tell me that the end times are here. Mm -hmm. This is the temple that He's talking about. He's not looking for a temple built with hands. We might be because of our carnal way of thinking about things, but that's not what God's doing. He's going to raise up a temple, amen, that is going to be filled with His glory. Now let me ask you something. This temple has been cleansed, has been... I don't need a, a, you know, a, a red heifer. I don't need any of that stuff. I don't need any of the utensils of this temple to be cleansed or purified because it's already been made holy. It's already been made righteous. It's the perfect spot for God to dwell in and for His glory to show forth from. And it's true about you and you and you and you and anybody who is a believer in Jesus. This is the reality that He's trying to get across us. I don't know why we can take one thing that's symbolic and then make it a natural thing the next minute. It's, if it's symbolism, it's symbolism. If He's talking about something symbolic, then it's symbolic. Amen? I don't want to get into all that revelation stuff, but the book of Revelation, for example, is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the literal word is apocalypsis. It's an appearing. Yes. Amen. It's not about, you know, giant grasshoppers and, and all this other crazy stuff. Those that's symbols. It's symbols. It's talking about something spiritual. Amen. Just the way Jesus did is taking something natural to explain something spiritual. 
And we want to take this natural out of it. We want to believe the natural. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. So he's not looking or coming to a natural temple, but he's coming to one not made with hands. Hallelujah. One that his glory can be revealed through. Praise God. So let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Now I don't have time to get into all this stuff tonight and that's why... I'm going to preach Sunday, praise the Lord, because I'm, I'll, I'm going to go further with this idea of the pattern. But I'm just saying, according to all that I show thee. So he's talking to Moses and he said, okay, let him make me a sanctuary so that I can dwell among them. Sanctuary is dwelling place. All right. So what he's saying is, let him make, let him make me a dwelling place so that I can dwell with them, so that I can be among them. Amen. According and build it according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. God's desire ever since the fall, ever since man lost his relationship with him. You know what Adam what happened with Adam and Eve, amen? His desire, his heart's desire has been to restore that relationship. And be able to dwell among us again. That's what everything in this is about. A revelation of us having relationship with God again. Amen. It's a, all a revelation of Jesus. Look at John chapter 14 verses 1 through 3. The pattern is Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, we always talk about this. I mean, I've preached this at funerals and heard it at funerals and everything else. Like, we're going off to the mansion in the sky. Now, I'm not denying heaven or the reality of that and its existence. But I'm saying this is talking about something else. Praise the Lord. We are the corporate house of God. I'm a house of God. You're a house of God. Corporately, we are the house of God. Amen. So there are many dwelling places in the Father's house. Praise the Lord. Look at John. Okay, just drop down to verse 23 and I'll show you. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Amen. The Greek word for abode is the same word that's used for mansion in verse 2 where we just read. In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. These are the only two places in Scripture, you can check it out for yourself, where the word is used. And that word is mone. It's uh, 3438 in Strong's Concordance, and it means mansion wow. or abode. They mean the very same thing. You can look it up for yourself. It's right there. So in verse 23, we could read it like this. So if man loves me and believes my words, my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our mansion with him. Wow. You're looking at a mansion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. In my Father's house yeah. are many mansions. The dwelling place of God. The abode of God. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to get my mansion. I already are one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to have a glorified body. I'm not looking for a, you know, condo on Heaven Street. <laughs> Amen. I am my condo. I am the mansion that I'm going to dwell in for eternity with God. Hallelujah. And this is a movable mansion. Amen. It's like, uh, you know, Hemingway. It's a movable feast. You know, we're just, we're just partying all the time wherever we are. Because we can be in heaven and we can be in earth. Just like that. 
in a split second. We can be just like Jesus. We can be here, and then we can be there. It's just two different dimensions. It's just two different realms. Right. We can be in the natural, and we can be in the supernatural, just like that. Praise the Lord. All right, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. See, we, this is the thing. We are spirit beings, but we live so beneath our reality. We live like humans, like flesh and blood. And we're, that's not who we are. It's just my house, man. I mean, it's just my ride. It's my vehicle, baby. It'll take you anywhere you want to go. I remember that old song. Uh -huh. On your vehicle, baby. I'll take you anywhere. Every time I hear that now, every, when I listen to the oldies, you know, I'm thinking, wow, this guy had no idea how spiritual he was. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Had a word from the Lord. Even the Lord said we are his chariots. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So I'm thinking I'm something. <laughs> kind of fast and I, I don't, something a white guy would drive but still cool you know <laughs> wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession Christ Jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Now look, we're talking about houses, right? There's a holy brother, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house has more honor than the house. Praise the Lord, for every house is builded by some man. But he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house, in the physical structure that he built. Right? right? Was faithful in all of his house. He followed the pattern God gave him as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. So it was just a picture. It, wasn't, it was never meant to be anything more than a pattern. But we've made it the thing. We've made it the goal. We've made it... The, 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 the structure as the thing that we're trying to get to. This is why everybody's thinking, oh man, if they build that second temple in Israel and we're worried about the, you know, they got the, uh, you know, the dome of the rock, you know, and all this stuff and how are we going to do it? I don't, I'm not worried about it. I know where the temple is. Amen? Which were to be spoken after. But Christ has a son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Mm. Praise the Lord. You got to know who you are. You got to believe who you are. And then you are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 8 verses 1 through 5. See, we're way, way more than we imagine. It's not egotistical. This isn't... This isn't uh, being braggadocious or anything. It's, it's what they said about Jesus. He's, he's a blasphemer. Why? Because he makes himself equal with God. He didn't. God did. Yeah. He said, I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. Mm -hmm. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. This is the totality of everything he said. Right? Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Amen. Who was a scholar of the Old Testament. Yes. A Jew. Spotless concerning the law. Amen? But he says, We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of his majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, of the dwelling place, of the mansion, of the abode, right? And of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. The tabernacle, the temple built without hands. Praise the Lord, you and me. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth... Now let me just throw this in there. What did the high priest do in the physical sanctuary? He offered up sacrifices. He gave... He, he uh, lit the incense. He offered up the, the showbread and all of these things. All, all of that he was doing. And all of that was for the people's benefit. Well, Jesus, the Lord, is in His tabernacle. So there's healing here. There's deliverance here. There's breakthrough. There's everything that I have need of, I have in here. This is the tabernacle where He ministers. Life. 
So there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things. All they were doing was being an example or a pattern or a type. They weren't the end all and the be all. They were just showing us something spiritual. They were trying to do what Jesus did when he was here in the flesh. Take something physical that you can see, touch, taste, and smell and show you something supernatural or spiritual with it. That's what the temple was. It was to show us this. Christ in us. Because Jesus is the pattern. Mm -hmm. yes. The temple, the, the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Amen. So who serve unto an example the shadow of the heavenly things? As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. The pattern was to be a pattern that would give us a revelation of the house of God. The house that God desires to live in today. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 9 and verse 11. I mean, if we really get this, you know, we, we, would, we would just be so different. We'd have such a greater impact. The glory would be shown. If we knew that God was in the temple. The impact that we would have on the people that we encounter and interact with. Because you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be freaky and spooky. Just be you. Just be God in the flesh. Look, you look at Jesus. He wasn't being weird. What do you want? Stretch out your hand. Here, put this in your eye. Now see. Take up your bed and walk. I mean, it was just people interacting with faith. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, this temple that he was talking about. He's speaking to the Hebrews, obviously the Jews. The pattern is the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. The pattern is he was the first tabernacle for God to be in the way God designed the original tabernacle to be a type of, to show us what he really wanted. So Jesus was the first real tabernacle, yeah. not made with hands, amen, for God to dwell in, a mansion, a dwelling place, an abode for God. He was the firstborn of many brethren. We are all these temples. We are all this now. It doesn't. It, you're not a blasphemer for saying I'm equal with Jesus. You're not. You're not God, but God's in you. That's what Jesus said. He was a man. He said it himself. I am a man, the Son of Man, filled with the Spirit of God. He was the pattern that we were supposed to see that was supposed to be understood by the Jews so that when that real temple came, they would recognize it based on all of the symbolism and all the types and shadows that they had. But they didn't because they were carnal. They saw with their natural eye. They heard with their natural ears. And that's why Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Eyes you have, but you don't see. Ears you have, but you don't hear. Because you're hearing natural. You're seeing natural. Instead of the supernatural. Instead of the spirit. Okay, last scripture. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And I'm telling you, this is where I believe God is taking us in this last day. God, If, if God's going to do what His Word says, and we know He's going to. This is the third day. He's raising up that true temple, that true tabernacle, and people are going to become aware of this, and all of a sudden the glory is going to begin to show, not in some building, not in some meeting. It may happen in a meeting, but it'll be a corporate thing. It's going to happen in each and every one of us. That's what he wants. The glory to fill the temple to where we can't mess it up anymore, where man can't even minister, the Spirit will do the work. We just have to be acknowledging it. We just have to be aware of it and recognize it. Jesus said, the works that I do, they're not my works, but it's the Father that's in me. He's doing the work. He's saying, he's come to the temple here, and I can't, the man me cannot make this stuff happen. I just have to step back and let God go. Just, just do what God says and say what God says and watch it happen. Praise the Lord. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, 
of the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. If there was ever a time for this, it's today. Yes. That's not saying that had no value. It's just saying we don't stop there. That's just where we start from. Amen? We aren't to stop at the foundation, but we're supposed to go on to perfection, on to completion. But what has the church done? It just keeps rehashing the same thing. I mean, I, I, listen, I was born again in a church where I heard Acts 2.38 preached every single message. Every single time there was a preacher preaching, Acts 2.38 came out. That's what was preached. Why? Because they couldn't get past it. I'm not saying there is truth in Acts 2.38. I'm just saying we don't just stay there. We don't just keep talking. Just like baptism. You don't just... I mean, yes, I believe in baptism, but I'm not going to preach baptism every day. At some point, you've got to move on past baptism. You've got to get beyond it. It doesn't negate it. It doesn't make it not a value or not worth anything. It's just that what good does it do to keep talking about the same thing when God's got so much more for us, but we won't step into it? Today is the day. If we will hear Him, amen, today's the day that He'll do it. Today's the day He'll show us something different. He, he, Lord, we keep talking about a new thing. You won't get a new thing by beating the same dead horse. Pardon the analogy, it's not real good, but I mean, I'm just saying, you, you're not going to, you're not going to get further revelation by just co continuously hashing over the old revelation. That's why we've got the denominations we've got now, because some believed in baptism, they said, that's it. Somebody else comes along, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, no way, that's demonic. Right? Well, then the ones who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they don't want to move on either. They just want to keep talking about that. They just want to keep talking about the gifts. I'm not, and I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying, what about more? more Lord. What makes us think that we got the end of this thing? Mm. That you're not going to get the end of God. As long as you're open to more of God, there'll be more of God. So today, don't harden your hearts. Don't, don't stop what God wants to do. Open up. Be be. Be ready for something new. Expect something new. Be part of something new. Amen? So we're not supposed to stop. We're supposed to move on to completion. See, it's, here's the thing. It's important to know not just what you listen to, but where you listen. Right here is where God is. And I promise you, God's talking to you all the time. But we're listening to so much out here that we're hearing very little of what's in here. We're hearing the doctor's report. We're hearing the bank's report. You know, we're hearing the, the negative. Instead of listening to the voice of God that's in us. Because believe me, he, he, He's in you and He talks to you. He said that, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but I'll, if I have, I'll just be redundant, which is what I do all the time, praise the Lord. So, but he said, there's a scripture that talks about him, him saying, I will come and I will shut the mouth of the enemies. Yeah. Well, God has come. And he has shut the mouth of the world for those who will listen to God. He's, ta he's taken care of the dust. Amen. The, the earthly, the natural. We are not earth people. We were, but we got born again. We are children of God. We just happen to have an earth suit, as they used to say. We've got a body. But that's not who we are. Praise the Lord. So it's important to know not only where, who, who to listen to, but where to listen. Where to look for the Lord. Are we looking for an, a, you know, a, appearing in the clouds? I, don't, I, I know I keep doing this, but I'm sorry. We are the clouds. This great cloud of witnesses. And he said he comes in the clouds. 
He comes as people for crying out loud. I'm not saying there isn't a future coming of the Lord. I'm just saying today, if you will not harden your heart, if you will hear what the Spirit is saying, you are this cloud. You are the cloud that He comes in. You are the thing through which He appears. Come on. But you've got to be looking for it here, not somewhere, not for somebody else to come and do it, not for somebody else to be it. You are it. You the one. Praise the Lord. It's you. Look for the Lord. Where? In the midst of his house, which you are. So we we have a tendency to come to church and recognize his presence and then go and forget that I can't go anywhere without him. I can't. David said it. He was speaking prophetically. If I make my bed in hell, if I'm in the heavens, if I'm here, if I'm there, he's always there. I can't, he, I can't get away from him. Because he and I are one. Right? That's what he's trying to get us to understand. He's in the midst of his house. And that house is us. That's why nothing is impossible to them that believe. That's why you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. You are a mansion for God. And in His house are many mansions. Yes, Lord. Paul said, when I look out there, he said, I see nothing but Christ and Him crucified. Mm-hmm. It was just way, another way of saying, all I see are God houses everywhere I look. Wow. It's another tabernacle that God dwells in. Glory. Praise the Lord. That's how God sees us. And if we ever get to the place where we can see ourselves that way, we'll do what that first century church did and more. We'll turn this world upside down because it'll be God doing it. Not our religion, not our theories, but the truth of God, the reality of God's presence in this earth again. Amen? Amen. I believe we need to wake up, wake up and shine. Hallelujah. Because this is the third day. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I'll just tell you, like a a pastor friend of mine, we had a a tent meeting one time when we were pastoring in Ankeny years ago, 25, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And uh, his wife said something to him, like wives do, like husbands do to their wives. And we say something stupid, you know, kind of aggravated or whatever. And he looked at her and he said, talk to me like I am somebody. (laughs) Praise the Lord. We could all take a lesson from that. We need to talk to each other like we're somebody. And we need to talk to ourselves like we're somebody. Because we are somebody. Amen. We are a manifestation of God in this earth. Praise the Lord. Don't let anybody talk down to you. Nobody puts baby in the corner. That's it. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Praise God. We are somebody. And we're somebody special. We are a dwelling place for God. It doesn't get any better than that. It just doesn't get any better than that. Praise God. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience tonight. The Lord bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Drive careful. Be somebody. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.